Hello everyone. This webinar is going to be for module six, hydronics, week one, day one, syllabus and safety. Section one, introductions to hydronics. 1.1 lecture on the basics of hot water heat. 1.2 cover and explain radiation, convection and conduction, which all aids in heat transfer. 1.3 cover and explain the basic difference between hot water heat and steam heat. 1.4, cover and explain the basic components of a hot water boiler, heat exchangers types, application and maintenance, circular pump sizing, placement applications and maintenance, explain tanks, type sizes, location and uses, air scoop types, uses and applications, pressure reducing valve, safety relief valve, backflow preventer, and boiler gauges. Section two, hot water boiler operation. 2.1, lecture on electrical components and working of a hot water boiler schematic. 2.2, cover and explain the following electrical parts. Aquastat wiring, uses and application, zone valve types, wiring, uses, applications and maintenance, vent damper, wiring, uses and application, limit switch, block vent switch, rollout switch, gas valve. 2.3, cover and explain troubleshooting the electrical circuit of a boiler. 2.4, cover and explain replacing electrical parts within the boiler. Section three, boiler sizing and piping. 3.1, cover and explain how a boiler is sized for a building, heat loss calculations. 3.2, lecture on the process by which a building is heated with hot water through radiators, baseboards, etc. 3.3, cover and explain using examples, the radiation chart for sizing radiators and or baseboard elements with copper fin tubing. 3.4, cover and explain the near boiler piping, the supply, the return, bypass, etc., and tapping in the boiler. 3.5, cover and explain how to size boiler piping chart and the difference between copper and galvanized pipes for heat transfer. 3.6, cover and explain water hammer, causes and effects. 3.7, cover and explain boiler maintenance, bleeding air from the lines and typical cleaning and checks. Section four, steam heat. 4.1, lecture on the characteristics of steam heating, how steam is generated and how it is used for heating the space. 4.2, cover and explain the different electrical controls used in steam heating, low water cutoff types, wiring uses and applications, water feeder types, wiring uses and application, pressure control, low and high, wiring setting uses and applications. 4.3, cover and explain the water column gauge and sight glass. 4.4, cover and explain the near boiler piping for a steam boiler and explain the Hartford loop. 4.5, cover and explain piping and radiation used for steam boilers, chart. 4.6, cover and explain maintaining and cleaning a steam boiler, skimming, and go over a proper clean and check. Safety vocabulary. Define the following words to help clarify general electrical safety. These words will be found in our online class assignments. Introduction to hydronics. Safety guidelines. Electrical safety guidelines. Follow these guidelines for general electrical safety. Be familiar with the electrical hazards around your work area. Look for overhead power lines, damaged tools and equipment, 
inadequate wiring and overloaded circuits, exposed electrical parts, improper grounding, damaged insulation, or wet conditions. Unplug electrical equipment before repairing or servicing it. It can be as easy as turning off the circuit breaker in the electrical panel box or turning off the service switch that is near or on the equipment that you are working on. Be sure to disconnect the power source to the equipment that you are working on to be sure that you do not get electrocuted. If a prong breaks off inside an outlet, properly turn off electricity and install a new outlet or get owner to hire an electrician. You can turn off the electrical breaker and then you can proceed to change the outlet. Once you have changed the outlet, you can turn the electrical breaker back on. Then you have to get a new extension cord or repair the extension cord that you had broken. Ensure that devices are firmly mounted. You do not want devices to come loose and become grounded inside of the equipment. Report all electrical problems, including trip breakers, broken switches, and flickering lights to homeowner. If a breaker has tripped, that means something has malfunctioned. Broken switches, you wanna change the switch so that you can control the power source going to the equipment. And flickering lights, you should tell the customer that the lights are flickering every time the unit is working. It can be something simple or it can be something major. All appliances used in HVAC must be UL Underwriters Laboratory labeled to be sure that it has gone through the right safety precautions. Introduction to Hydronics Safety Guidelines. Do not use an appliance that sparks, smokes, or become excessively hot unless the appliance is specifically designed to exhibit these characteristics. Portable electrical heaters must be placed to avoid causing a trip hazard and must be kept away from combustible material. Never leave a heater unattended. Unplug the heater at the end of the day or when not in use. Keep electrical equipment away from water unless the appliance is specifically designed for use around water, such as a wet, dry shop vacuum. Use GFCIs whenever possible, especially around wet areas. Be aware of overhead power lines when working with equipment on roofs. Follow lockout, tagout procedures as appropriate. Introduction to Hydronics Safety Guidelines. Follow these guidelines for electrical plug and cord safety. Do not remove the prongs of an electrical plug. If the plug prongs are missing, loose or bent, replace the entire plug. There are three prongs on a plug and they all have a job to do. One is for power source, one is for the neutral, and one is for the ground. Do not use an adapter or extension cord to defeat a standard grounding device. Only place three-pronged plugs and three-pronged outlets. Do not alter them to fit in a two-pronged outlet. If you try to use a three-pronged plug in a two-pronged outlet, you will be missing the ground. Use extension cords only when necessary and only on a temporary basis. Do not use extension cord in place of permanent wiring. The cord can become overused, get hot, and possibly start a fire. Get new outlets if your work requires equipment in an area without an outlet. Use extension cords that are correctly sized or rating for the equipment in use. The diameter of the extension cord should be the same or greater than the cord of the equipment in use. 
Do not run electrical cord above ceiling tiles or through walls. Keep electrical cords away from area where they may be pinched and areas where they may pose a tripping or fire hazard. Doorways, walkways, under carpet, etc. Introduction to Hydraulic Safety Guidelines Avoid plugging more than one appliance in each outlet. If multiple appliances are necessary, use an approved power strip with surge protector and circuit breaker. Do not overload the circuit breaker. Discard damaged cords, cords that become hot, or cords with exposed wiring. Never unplug an appliance by pulling on the cord. Pull on the plug. Use link or check email for link to access questions. Thank you.